What is going on guys, welcome to the Mark Flyer. Welcome to another episode of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial with me today uh, Where today we are going to do another iOS approach tutorial here And we'll be doing at Singapore Changi Airport uh, Expect to do it in runway 2.0 right for today And then the only thing different that we will be doing the iOS approach is uh, we will set the weather into some thunderstorm and then uh, slight gusts of wind around Changi Airport for our approach today. So of course we are doing this uh, is purely for simulation testing purpose. We want to see how real it gets when it comes to uh, this kind of thunderstorm cell. And in real life you don't do that. First of all of course is endangering the safety of the aircraft and then second it will be very uncomfortable for the passenger behind. Unless you are in an extreme condition like if you are in a low fuel state and then even all your alternate airports are experiencing the same weather as well so you have no choice but to uh, penetrate through this kind of uh, thunderstorm and proceed with the approach and land at the airport so before we start off the uh, simulator session today again let's just uh, have a quick go through on the chart we have today for Singapore runway 20 right yep as per usual we check on the index number we have 11-4 on the chart index but that is correct and then your localizer identification in the Charlie Hotel 108.9 frequency a final cross cost 203 which is the same as per your runway track for runway 20 right a passing Iduro 1500 feet this one will be our final approach fix and then uh, airport elevation 22 feet and uh, runway elevation 13 feet so approach today is a very straightforward approach so you expect to come to position Ibna and then followed by Igula then Ibmas then Iduro Iduna then proceed to land uh, we are expect to do the approach today coming from the northern side so which we are going to intercept on the final approach course at the Ibna and then for the uh, Plan view, you are expect to intercept the glide stroke at position Igula at an altitude of 3,500 feet. The after descent at a glide path angle of 3 degrees. Uh, for our approach today, we have this uh, high intensity approach lighting system being installed on the uh, runway. And then you have uh, REIL stands for runway and identifier light, uh, puppy on the both side of runway 20 right. So for the minima again, we have this uh, minimal approach climb gradient of 3.7% until passing 2,500 feet which uh, as I mentioned earlier in my previous video on the Hong Kong approach uh, that one our climb gradient required is 5% so for our case today is 3.7% which we are able to meet with the requirement since we don't have any overweight landing procedure we are not operating in a high altitude airport even though we are operating in quite extreme condition today since uh, going into some thunderstorm and a CV cell so we might expect chances of uh, uh, microburst or windshield as well but of course we don't take all this into consideration we are talking about under normal circumstances where we can meet with the requirement of 3.7% so today we are going to stick with the uh, decision altitude of 213 feet and of course visibility requirement with RER which is your runway visual range of 550 meter for today's approach with the setting I've set up here I believe we are more than that so another thing to highlight will be yes we have speed control again for Singapore Changi as for Changi in the pre-covid era uh, it used to be one of the busiest airfields that I've flown to with tons of traffic going in and out the uh, airport Hence, the speed control for them is uh, fairly important in order to maintain uh, sequencing between the traffics. Today, since we don't have a DC in the flight stream, we are going to follow with the speed control over here. So all arrivals into Singapore will be issued instruction by ATC to maintain 180 knots until 8 miles and then 150 knots until 4. And for the missed approach, we will be climbed straight ahead to 5000 feet. This is the altitude you are going to set on your FCU once you are captured on the glide stroke. On crossing Sierra Juliet VOR Radio 146, proceed direct to position Sanko, holding area and hall or as directed by ATC. And then for our minimum sector altitude today, we are going to uh, pass through the highest will be 3400 segment, which is between waypoint Iduro until uh, just before reaching Iduna. For the mid approach, we'll be passing through the 2100 feet segment. And lastly, uh, for the approach radar is required, 
and then your simultaneous approach authorized with runway 20 left or 20 center. So you can see here Changi there's a three runway currently at the airport and normally we'll be using 02 left or 20 right and then 02 center or 20 center for our approach landing and then take off. However, with uh, runway 02 right and 20 left, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it should be opening to uh, commercial airliners and cargo airliners in the future with the ongoing Changi East project at here at Singapore or known as the Terminal 5 of Changi Airport. So anyway, IRS DME is co-located with the glide slope. So meaning that the uh, diesel measuring equipment station and your glide path station is uh, located at the same area. And many times vessels of variable heights in water, north and south of runway. So another interesting fact about Singapore uh, approach and uh, departure here is the with the vessel coming in from the northern side of the airport or the southern side of the airport. If you've been to Singapore, you must have seen quite a lot of uh, ships or vessels with all the containers inside all along the coast of uh, Singapore. Uh, fun fact is that all this vessel it actually affects the climb gradient requirement when it comes to uh, your departure path and then as well as your arrival path. So for example, there's this minimum climb gradient criteria here in the chart uh, written for Rame 0 to left. So uh, when there's no reported vessel movement along the northern shipping channel or if the vessel height is 35 meter equivalent to 115 feet above mean sea level and below. So all aircraft departures of runway 02 left regardless of your SID to maintain a minimum climb gradient of 3.3% and then if there is any vessel crossing uh, by the time of departure is uh, above 35 meter or more than 115 feet ATC will advise the pilot that there is this uh, vessel crossing your departure path so you have to maintain a higher climb gradient determined by your uh, respectively operator which is the pilot himself after that you have to maintain such climb gradient until passing the minimum crossing altitude over vessel thereafter you may switch back to climb gradient of 3.3% so it's a very interesting thing here in uh, Singapore with such procedure and I've been to Singapore for quite a few times and I've so far I never encountered a situation where I have to use this minimum climb gradient uh, criteria but it's good to know and lastly circling over uh, runway 20 right is not authorized so that's all basically what we have covered in the chart so for now let's proceed into the aircraft all right guys so now we are inside the cockpit and our current position is about five miles to position in now and we are coming for the approach from the uh, northwest side of the airfield and we are maintaining 3500 feet a speed selected of 230 knots with the post phase being activated so let's have a look on the uh, flight management system so to see our setup here for the flight plan we have uh, arrival ILS 20 right for Singapore Changi being set up uh, via IPNA transition and for performance page we have the weather being inserted we have uh, QNH 1007 temperature 25 uh, wind will be 270 diagonal 15 knots so later on the final approach we can expect a headwind to cross beam from coming from our uh, around 1 or 2 o'clock for the approach and decision altitude 213 is showing a minimum descent altitude here but it should be as decision altitude of 213 and config full for landing Another thing we have to take note will be over our go around page. Since we have mentioned on the minimum approach climb gradient early on, 3.7% until passing 2,500 feet. So in order for us to meet the requirement, we have to only accelerate and uh, reduce our thrust at or above 2,500 feet. So I've set my case here 2,600 feet. Same goes for the engine acceleration altitude. Otherwise, we don't want the uh, climb gradient to be too shallow for the missile approach. So that's all for the setup in the uh, flight management system. For the FCU, uh, speed selected 230 knots, maintain 3,500 feet. If I were autopilot, one engage and auto plus engage. And on the constraint push button here, so that you can see the altitude constraint on the approach, and then your LS button on for both sides as well. So for the uh, navigation display, normally on the pilot flying side, we turn on the weather radar over here. We can switch it to either system 1 or system 2 depends if the aircraft is equipped with either system 1 or system 2 
and then you have your colorful weather showing on your navigation display which is not a good thing as you can see it's mostly red and magenta in color see it's a bit bright here so what we're going to do is you can adjust the uh, brightness at the place where you adjust your navigation display brightness on the outer ring let me just reduce a little bit much better and then for the pilot monitoring side normally we are going to turn on the terrain on and the so that the pilot monitoring is always away of the msa that you are flying to so while the pilot flying monitor on the weather that's all basically for the setup and then as you can see the CB in front of us looks quite realistic and we are about to penetrate it later so a few things to note if you have no choice you have to really enter a thunderstorm is to ensure that uh, crew both the pilot flying and pilot monitoring are well seated with your seatbelt fastened and then you have your seatbelt sign on and you make the announcement cabin crew passenger remain seated due to turbulence and of course you have to ensure the cockpit light is uh, fully on to minimize blinding effect caused by the lightning so you can see in front we have a lightning effect inside the uh, thunderstorm here and then especially in night time where this is fairly important and then another thing is to make sure the uh, you have adequate vertical separation when it comes to terrain clearing so since we are coming doing the approach over singapore i don't think we'll be going through any uh, terrain area here uh, use of weather radar so we have turned it on on the pilot flying side mode selector is advisable to switch to initial mode so we switch to initial mode and according to airbus it only says that engine mode selector for the approach as required so select initial if runway is covered with standing water or if heavy rain or severe turbulence is expected during approach or go around area since we can expect quite a bit of uh, water ingestion for our approach today so it's better to leave it on and since we are on a descent path most likely your engine is going to be remain on either Another thing to highlight is uh, there's chances of uh, wind shear or microburst inside such weather so both the pilots must always be prepared in case there's any reactive wind shear or predictive wind shear coming out so you have to do the memory item as required and guys always trust your instrument whenever you are flying in IFR condition otherwise you have no way to reference so instrument is the only thing that you can trust in this situation now we are approaching position 8 now and then I manage my speed so that the speed is at the green top speed now we have our localizer alive so I'm going to arm my approach we have a lock being captured and then cat 3 single on the FMA I have no idea why is it showing lock straight away it should be showing uh, lock star first before showing lock same goes for the glass slope later on so we have the localizer being captured now and normally under normal circumstances the ATC in Singapore might ask us to descend to 2500 feet and then intercept the uh, localizer and then the glass slope so anyway today we're just going to follow as per the uh, profile here which is 3500 feet You have your glass slope alive, then you may call for flaps on. And to be exact, you need to maintain 180 knots until at nautical miles. And speed is selected 180 knots. Later that same evening. You have glass slope being captured and the GS is shown on the FMA. So you just set your go around altitude. 5,000 feet over your MCU so 5,000 feet is being set and then we continue on the approach by this time you should be uh, advising the approach that you have fully established on the IRS for around 20 right then after the approach will advise you to contact on the tower for your landing clearance so the speed is increasing again we have to use speed brake mode now Reduce your speed to 150 knots and call for laps 2. But 
to increase your drag, just uh, call for landing gear down. Gear down. They may call for the uh, landing checklist, cabin crew, advice, auto trust, speed, auto brake, low, the cab memo, we have a cabin one blue, which we can disregard it. So landing checklist completed, clearance to go. So approaching four miles, next thing we are going to do is to reduce the speed. Since I set the cloud base quite low, so let's see uh, around which altitude we can reach with the runway. Otherwise, we have to commence a uh, misapproach in the uh, runway 20. Right, right I have visual with the ground now. You can see the sea over here. We have a wind coming from the uh, right at uh, 30 knots. Visual with the approach light. Yep, visual with runway. Let's go for manual flight. Let's go for the FD. Oh my god. So let's check on the wind direction. So we're expecting a cross wind from the right. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. A bit higher profile, it's just increased my real descent and hit me. say the uh, thunderstorm graphic and everything here inside the Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to be uh, quite realistic especially like the moment before we touch down uh, we are breaking through the clouds somewhere around 500 feet then only we can be with the runway so it's quite realistic as compared to uh, real life flight and that's all for today thank you for watching if you have any suggestion or you have any feedback just leave a comment down below let me know what kind of approach you want to see doing next and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video and I shall see you guys in the next video.